Well, greetings to everyone. Uh, my name is Seth Berman. I'm the CEO of Instantiations. Um, I'm also an engineer, like, uh, well, now, uh, Mariano, like Mariano. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, so it's always a pleasure to come back to Argentina. Um, I've been here uh, enough times to know that I, I, I really love hanging out with everyone here. It's very friendly culture. Everyone's always been, you know, extremely welcoming, and I, I really appreciate that about Argentina. And uh, I love seeing the familiar faces and friends, but also new faces from people I haven't met. And certainly would love you to come talk to me uh, if at any point during the rest of the conference. Um, would love to meet new people. And uh, I think it's really important to also thank the the organizers of of this conference uh, and volunteers. Um, certainly, we've put on some conferences. We sponsor conferences, um, and we just recognize that having a cohesive uh, conference and, and group of folks to stay together is really vital to the health of a community. And so, but in that is a lot of work behind the scenes to make that happen. Uh, definitely want to give a shout out to the folks who put this together. Thank you for all your hard work and, and doing this year after year. It's, it's really important, and we appreciate it. Uh, so just a little bit about me. I don't uh, often do enough background on myself. Uh, um, basically, I've been programming since I, as long as I can remember, probably since uh, about nine years old. Um, I got started with a language called Logo Writer. If anybody remembers that, that's like the, the little turtles that you would instruct to you know, put the pen down, pen up, forward, all these things. In fact, I've still got a three and a half floppy today with all the programs I wrote and I showed them to my kids. And they think that my mind is really warped because of the things that I made. But maybe I'll share that another day. Um, so then later, you know, I got a bachelor's degree in computer science. Um, went on to get a, ma a master's in software engineering. Uh, but none of my kind of formal education involved small talk at all. But I was really fortunate enough to have my first job out of the university uh, to be building war games for the U.S. government, of which the largest of those was written in small talk. And in fact, it was written in the small talk dialect that instantiation supports and enhances today. So my career after that kind of took me several different places, but I, I eventually came back to instantiations about, I think it was about 12 or 13 years ago at this point. And then I went on to, to take over the company about six years ago. So I've always thought it was kind of cool that I had the opportunity to, to lead instantiations today and it's a company that, you know, puts great care into, you know, our small talk language and runtime. And it's the same one I got my start in over 22 years ago at this point. And for those not familiar with our company, uh, so we're the developers of the VAST platform. And this is uh, or VA small talk as it, it's been known until recently. And prior to that, um, before 2005, it was IBM Visual Age small talk. So in this session, I'm going to kind of talk about you know, it's going to be more, more of a what's going on with the company behind the scenes because we 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 just have a lot going on right now, uh, and it's it's very exciting. And we're happy to share it, uh, but then we'll also kind of talk about what's coming in the next release of Vast. Um, I'm uh, pretty technical, so if at the end there's uh, there should be some time for questions, I'm happy to take any technical questions. Certainly some business ones if you're interested, and um, so we'll get started. So first, does, does everyone know what a, if I said the word boutique company, do you know what that means? I mean, can you raise hands to, does that mean anything to anybody? Okay, so what uh, maybe, may, maybe one of you, if you'd yell out, if I said boutique company, what, what kind of imagery comes to your mind? What? Few people. Okay, good. Specialized. Niche. Perfect. So, 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 so and typically... And quality, okay, great. These are these are perfect. These are the things that come to my mind, uh, especially in the in the United States. Uh, you know, it typically means, like you guys were saying, a specialty store selling you know unique, hard to find items. The imagery of a antique store on the corner, you know, some sort of something like that. Very craft, very very uh, intimate. You know, those kinds of things. And these are all very true. And in the traditional sort of storefront retail market. That's definitely a way to capture the meaning, and it's the way it's often understood. However, uh, another way to think about it is boutique is actually a business model. And it's one that involves 
kind of serving a highly focused segment of the market. So that's a kind of a strategic decision and putting, you know, kind of emphasis on the quality of services around the products in a way that sort of actually makes it difficult for competitors to match. And so there's lots of different business models. I mean, there's, um, you know, you can have profit center model. That one's going to be a much wider net, right? So more broader markets, broader range of products. You're going to be, the emphasis is going to be more on maximizing profitability. And all of these are fine. In fact, managing profit and growth is something that all businesses, you know, commercial businesses have to contend with and ought to be doing uh, if they want to be around, uh, regardless of what model they choose. And so growing a business to meet new demands uh, from customers and the greater market must always be something that's considered no matter what model you choose. But sort of the reason I bring this up is instantiations has always operated using more of a boutique business model uh, because it's sort of the best model to support our core value or the thing we value most at the company, which is people. So, and this is sort of realized in two different ways, internally and externally. We do this internally by making sure we maintain a very strong, cohesive culture with uh, highly skilled engineers that are kind of committed to the mission, committed to customer success. And our staff, I mean, we're really, uh, really tightly, tightly knit group of folks. Uh, and certainly without, without our great engineers and software developers, uh, instantiations, you know, we wouldn't exist uh, really in the form that we are. I mean, seriously, they, they put, you know, we have the kind of folks that are intrinsically motivated. They, they would be doing this anyway, whether they were getting paid or not. That's the kind of folks we hire. And, uh, and, and so that gives us our ability you know, to reflect our core value externally because of that. So that's kind of where it starts. So externally, you know, it probably goes without saying that our customers are important to us and they're, of course, instrumental in our success. But we also think instantiations and VAST are sort of instrumental in their success too. And so we strive to contribute to that success through our, you know, our engineers providing the support that they need. And regarding community, I mean, I kind of touched on this, you know, we're all stronger as a result um, of the community and we're happy to be part of it. And so we'd like to give back wherever we can. So we do some, we sponsor, you know, this conference, we sponsor um, ESUG and some others. We put on some um, in the States and uh, we certainly try to contribute code to open source projects when we're able to. Uh, so in kind of the bottom line, in our view, our more relational business model uh, that puts a kind of a strategic emphasis on people has kind of led to our happier staff, happier customers, and sort of continued, allowed us to continue to expand the vast platform um, and new opportunities have developed over the years. So now with that said, I mean, what's, what's the result of instantiations continually, you know, putting this value on people. So what's the point of doing this? And, you know, in the past year, not unexpectedly, it's resulted in new opportunities that will allow us to kind of serve our market even better, which is something we're really excited about. Um, so the first thing to mention is, you know, instantiations is growing uh, and, and recently, you know, pretty considerably. So uh, something that, uh, you know, we're actually acquiring a new business line and uh, everybody at the company has been extremely excited about this. And every, you know, it was very important to have everybody's buy-in on this direction. This is a new line that begins in 2024. And it's sort of the main driver was having the right people, you know, we formed relationships with, uh, with which has set us up to be in a great position, you know, for this new business. And so this acquisition has been in the works for almost a year and a half at this point. It's taken a, a lot of time and energy and uh, put together for everybody involved, you know. But this is okay, you know, we, we wanted to move at the pace that left instantiations always convinced that this was a beneficial move uh, for everyone involved, customers, our internal folks, everybody. And we're absolutely convinced at this point, uh, this is gonna give instantiations an opportunity to serve our customers even better while continuing to maintain our market focus, which is sort of in line with our business model. And ultimately to more strongly reflect our core values as a business to the industry at large. So more details, I mean, you know, we, we can talk offline uh, more about this, but I'll just say for now, you know, more details about this specific business line will be announced in the coming weeks. However, I mean, it must be said, and this is the crucial part, and this is the part everybody's really excited about. 
the vast platform is central to, to most of the technologies driving this new business. And so this kind of the good news here, besides the fact that we're super excited about it because we love Vast, uh, this further solidifies the importance and longevity of the Vast platform. So not only are, are our customers using it for their organizations and their customers, but we're now using it, Vast ourselves, to serve customers beyond just being the platform providers. So what's interesting about this is kind of another way to think of it. We essentially become uh, customers of ourselves. This will position us to better understand, better empathize, and help our customers really in a superior way. Again, very in line with our business model. And ultimately, this new business line will allow, allow us to continue to invest more directly in VAST for the long term, because we're, we're in this for the long game. So as part of this new business, we're planning for a pretty dramatic expansion. I mean, it's already kind of been in the works uh, over the next you know, six months or so, uh, we'll have a team dedicated specifically to this new business line. And as a matter of fact, when I get back from here, I'm just a couple of days, I've got a very skilled developer who will be starting with us. Uh, and that kind of trend will be continuing. So we're, we're simultaneously adding to the vast engineering team as well, because they're very much a core pro part of what's, what's happening on this new business line. So we recently brought in a longtime community member, uh, Heinrich Johansson, who's now on board with us. Uh, this growth is going to continue as well over the next few months. Uh, our vast customers are going to see some great benefits as early as the next release because he's already been on board doing just fantastic work. And, you know, for the organization as a whole, we brought on a CISO, which is a chief information security officer, uh, to help with kind of new security requirements and other business-wide improvements. And there have been many other fantastic people that have been, you know, we've been bringing on board beyond, um, you know, our core engineers. There's a lot of um, other types of positions that we've had to bring on to help us manage our new responsibilities that we have as a company and sort of be good stewards of, of what we have and set ourselves up for the future. So another part of making all this possible is continuing to add to the, to the solid foundation of VAST. Uh, with new technologies. So we've talked in the past with tech like Rust being the backbone of our new Unicode framework uh, with our virtual machine already, but, but generally we're adding more performance, more stability, and usability improvements to VAST 2024. And if you've used VAST in recent years, you know that it's extremely stable, it's performant, and that trend is now, only, I mean, is definitely going to continue. And we've even started to, uh, an initiative to improve the system which we use for our support case tracking. So our customers will really see an improved user experience on that front as well in the form of a customer portal. Um, and again, that just, that just helps us relationally uh, give, add more value for them for the service that we're providing. And there's other ongoing improvements in, um, as well. So one of the one of the things is, you know, as part of growing our organizational capabilities uh, with the help from our, C from our CISO, uh, we're currently working on what's called SOC 2 readiness, which is similar to ISO 27001, which at a high level is kind of a framework for cybersecurity protection that includes built-in audits to confirm our ongoing compliance. And this is all for working with those customers in a more demanding, you know, industry that we must adhere to more strict regulations. And so we're super excited about this because we sincerely, you know, want our customers to always have a high level of trust in instantiations. And, you know, part of that is having a high level of trust in how we conduct ourselves, how we protect their data, uh, both and how we, you know, are, are performing our business processes. And this is just part of that, you know, level uh, adding to that level of trust. So then what's coming up for instantiations? Well, at a very high level, we're constantly reviewing what we can do to improve ourselves as well as the VAST platform. But beyond that, you know, we're in a growth phase at the moment and that will continue for the foreseeable future. It's an exciting time for instantiations and we're looking forward to the new possibilities that will result from it. But that said, you know, the management team at instantiations is very carefully monitoring the growth uh, to ensure sustainability. And, and that, of course, is 
actually more important to us in some ways than the growth itself. Now, uh, continued emphasis on people. Uh, we're going to continue the emphasis on that which we value as a company. Again, it's, it's a focus on our customers, on our community, our staff. Uh, this is ultimately what's brought us success. It's a, it's a winning model. And we believe, you know, will be a recipe for a continued success. And we found that solutions tend to fall into place when you prioritize putting people in the right places. So I think I've talked about this before, but, you know, uh, every community, uh, small talk included, needs infusion of new ideas. And for us, this means getting inspired by great technologies, uh, approaches, lesson learn, lessons learned from others, and adapting them to the needs of vast and instantiations. Uh, like the lessons we learned from languages from Dart, from Rust, from Swift, which provided some great building blocks uh, and tools for our asynchronous frameworks, uh, as well as our Unicode support library, and we'll certainly continue looking outward for new lessons. But looking outward is not just about, you know, kind of the pulling aspect, uh, just our inspiration, but sharing our expertise also. Uh, we've seen significant adoption of our port of Bass compression library to the Dart language. So if you go out on pub.dev and look up, you know, the ES underscore compression project on Dart, it's very popular at this point. And uh, it's actually a port from Vast, and we get to talk about Vast in the comments there, and our and our design doc is there, and we try to we try to show others um, the relevancy of of small talk, and we're sure that this you know that continuing this approach will yield other useful exchanges uh, in the future. Now, building bridges between communities through sharing and porting of code is is mutually beneficial but it ultimately ends up educating other developers outside our community uh, about Smalltalk as well. So by taking this approach, we think it's possible to grow Vast uh, and its usage just beyond the Smalltalk community. So in truth, it all just starts with a meaningful exchange of technology and ideas. So again, this is another reason why looking outward is such a great thing to do. And so with this exchange of information, plus our sort of continuous R&D activities, which will continue and grow, we'll keep bringing new things to the table. Uh, VAST is a great platform that can integrate various technologies uh, with web-based capabilities becoming more and more important. We'll be focusing on new communication technologies and protocols, and our new asynchronous uh, technology is part of that. Um, these are the use cases we're optimizing you know, for, because that's where a lot of the active development is happening with our customers in particular. Uh, we'll still continue addressing all the, you know, all the parts of the layers of the stack uh, for thick client applications, which is still in demand by our customer sets. And we must, you know, also anticipate features that are that are coming up by, by looking outward and being able to kind of detect where things are headed. Okay, so now we get to uh, so that was sort of the business part what's happening with instantiations. Um, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit uh, and go to uh, what's coming up with the VAST, the VAST platform 2024, which is going to be released, um, scheduled for just a few months. And so these, I'm just going to hit sort of on the, the highlights. Uh, one of the big things is performance improvements. I know, you know, Mariano talked about everything going on behind the scenes to make sure, basically, we're preparing ourselves and where this is a continuous story over a period of years, to be able to more rapidly advance in a responsible and safe way, not just, not just you know, rapidly try to advance the product, but then, you know, stability falls. We we don't want that. So perform, you know, we're we're getting to a point now where that's 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 really going to take off. One of the things we're doing here is performance improvements via the usage of SIMD uh, algorithms. We've got a lot of those in the Unicode library we're actually taking a lot of that uh that simd uh code for search and uh and things like that we've we've actually moved them over to the legacy string class so now uh include substring includes all those kinds of uh all, all those kinds of apis are now simd assisted and extremely fast we also have you know deeper unicode integration uh, of course esteban talked uh, quite a bit about this 
further improvements to the core Unicode framework, uh, including Unicode support in all of our supported database drivers, as well as Glorp. He's done a fantastic job taking that on. Uh, code editor updates, enhanced code editing with more possibilities for new visualizations, Unicode improvements in other languages beyond Smalltalk. We've got our table widget integrations, which are now integrating into our WYSIWYG UI builders, which is Window Builder and ABT Parts. Um, and those will now include the, uh, the support for the Windows table widget common control. This is one that we're really excited about, um, is, is the WebView 2 controller. Uh, it's bi-directionally, with this, we can bi-directionally control web pages, uh, get callbacks from JavaScript uh, in your applications using the latest version of Microsoft Edge and Smalltalk itself. Uh, if you didn't get a chance, uh, Mariano actually did a presentation on this at, uh, at ESUG. So um, once those videos get posted, uh, please check that out. It's a, it's a really cool feature. Um, uh, again, we were kind of touching on this internal build improvements. Uh, this has been a heavy, you know, uh, heavy focus for us. Uh, expanded performance and coverage tests to ensure even uh, fewer regressions um, for each version. And the best way, you know, to describe this is, you know, automated performance regression testing is kind of where what we're trying to do here. Finally, sort of our long-term project for the moment, there will be other ones coming online. Uh, as the multi-year GTK development begins. So this is something that, kind of like Unicode, it was something that was announced, you know, that might be coming for some period of time, but it was extremely complex and just took a while to get our grounding with it before we were ready to move forward. Uh, so it goes with GTK. I think this was been on the, quote, roadmap for some time, but we finally reached that inflection point where we're ready to to go full full in on it. And so work has already begun in this. Uh, it's going to improve the look and feel and development experience on Linux in particular. Uh, but GTK will provide a better path forward uh, for more visual capabilities and eventually enable uh, vast compatibility on platforms beyond Windows and Linux. And so this is a potential feature we think right now for VAS 2025. Uh, but it's important, again, this is one of those, it's, it's got to be right once we send it out into the either to the customer base. So we need to uh, make sure that's going to be done correct and we we handle everything. So we'll keep, you know, folks, the community updated on its progress. So at this point, even in light of everything going on, it's we're still on track for a for a Q1, quarter one, 2024 release. Um, of course, we'll try to do it earlier if possible, but I suspect we'll see at the latter part of, of Q1 is my guess. Of course, there's lots of other things. These are sort of the highlights. And with that, that's the that's the presentation. It uh, looks like 23 minutes, so certainly have time for questions if you have any. Obviously, that was a lot, a lot going on. But um, even if you have other technical questions, if I can answer them, that would that would be fine too. So I'll open it up. Yes, um, can you mention the business uh, market that you are acquiring, or not not yet? Um, so, uh, uh, why don't we talk about it offline? Okay, I mean, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, later. <laughs> Thank you.